actor Alec Baldwin's involuntary manslaughter case has been dismissed. This morning, we're shining a light on how it may affect the case against his co-defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, who is currently serving an 18-month prison sentence for that same crime. Let's bring in a very special guest now. We're so pleased to have on the show Hannah's attorney, Jason Bowles. Jason is a former prosecutor and a criminal defense attorney now in the private sector. We saw him in action. Uh, he was sensational representing her on really tough, tough facts. Uh, Jason, good morning. It's nice to see you. Could we start, please, with the motion for a new trial that I was, I was joking a little bit yesterday on the program saying, I bet you're on the way to get it filed ASAP. Um, tell us, uh, has it been filed yet? Good morning, Julie, and it's great to see you. And, and we will be filing that motion today. Um, that motion is going to spell out in detail uh, that we are seeking a dismissal uh, or a motion or a new trial. Uh, as you saw, the judge very thoughtfully considered uh, the, the evidence and the situation that developed a trial and found ser serious misconduct on the part of the prosecution uh, in a discovery violation uh, and also in how they treated certain evidence, uh, putting it into a separate file and not turning it over to the defense. That is just the tip of the iceberg that we will be filing in our motion today. We have learned about other serious discovery violations. And, and look, I mean, the biggest thing about our system, as the judge said, is ensuring the integrity, ensuring the fairness to everybody that comes before trial. We're all entitled to that. And we're going to be putting that before the judge. Jason, my ears perked up when you said other discovery violations. So you're saying more than just the rounds that they chose not to test and not to disclose. Absolutely, Julie. We have found now that we did not get a third expert report uh, from their expert on the, the firearms. Uh, we did not get a, a completely new interview of Seth Kenny, which, as you might remember, Seth Kenny was one of the key witnesses, one of the key players in this whole matter. And we just found out last week that there were 900 new pages approximately turned over of emails and uh, statements of witnesses in the trial that we would have been able to cross-examine them on. So it's actually beyond the pale. You cannot conduct a trial uh, in an unfair manner as a prosecutor. You put it all out there and let the jury decide. But what happened here is we, we had things hidden from us, and that's not fair. No, no. And you, you know this, Jason, from having served as a prosecutor, there are special rules that apply. Anything you get, you've got to turn over. You don't just get to pick and choose like they did in this situation that caused the dismissal for Alec Baldwin's case. Uh, backing up a moment, did you say you were denied an interview opportunity with Seth Kenny? I wanted to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. We, we actually interviewed uh, Seth Kenny, and we had some of his interviews, but we got a completely new interview he had conducted with the uh, prosecution that we never knew about. He made several favorable statements to Hannah, uh, which are going to be in our motion, which we never had. And which if I had had, I would have cross-examined him on a trial. It could have changed uh, the way the jury saw his testimony, I believe. And, you know, I want to highlight something you just said. Uh, the duty of a prosecutor is to do justice. And that's the first thing they teach you. Or Linda Johnson uh, in her interviews did the right thing uh, at the end of the hearing on July 12th. And you saw a, another version of that, which is the prosecution essentially hiding evidence and trying to win at all costs. And that is not the duty of a prosecutor. So, so we're going to be attacking that in our motion. Right, Jason. It's about doing the right thing. I remember my mentor said that to me. You know, it, it's the best job in the world because you get to come to work every day and do the right thing. And sometimes the right thing is withdrawing charges, amending charges, not proceeding with the prosecution. It's not about getting a conviction, as you know. Uh, I want to play a clip for you of Seth Kenny. Uh, this is where, uh, during the motion to dismiss the case, he was called as a witness, as you know. Let's take a listen to some of what he said. Did you provide props and ammunition to the set of the movie Rust? I did. Or was that after you brought these back from Texas? I do not know. I do not know when this bin came back to, uh, to Albuquerque from Texas. You drove it back yourself? I did, but I did a few trips. You don't remember the day that you brought it back? Correct. Okay. It, it could have been before the shooting, could have been after the shooting. The dummy rounds that you provided to the set of Rust did you personally ensure that they were all inert? Absolutely. 
Oof. Okay, so Jason, this is huge what you're sharing with us this morning, that there were exculpatory statements he made about your client, Hannah, that you're sharing with us that the prosecution held back before you went to trial. So you had no knowledge of them, no chance to cross him. Um, and then after you watched him on Friday, uh, did he say anything contradictory to what he had said in those previous statements? I'm curious. I, I think his his testimony and, and story have changed repeatedly in, in certain uh, important aspects. One of the biggest is we now know he came back October 12th uh, and he brought a, a box of dummy rounds to Sarah Zachary on that day. Well, that's nine days before the shooting. So this testimony that he doesn't know when he came back, I find very suspect. I did a trial. I mean, there's receipt, gas receipts. Obviously, he had to fill up coming from Texas. Um, he could have gone back and verified. That was an attempt to try to hide that he brought him back before. But now we know he brought him back on October 12th. And we've got several other statements that we're going to be able to present to the judge. Ultimately, what the jury heard was a uh, partial version. And, and the, the prosecutors hid the full version. So we're going to bring that out in, the, in some of our matters in the motion. Oh, I'm sure you are. Uh, th this motion is going to be chocked full of, of multiple grounds for dismissal and, you know, or a, a retrial, depending on how the court comes down. Uh, Jason, tell me, backing up a little bit, we heard a lot about this witness, Troy Teske, the uh, retired police officer who uh, was referred to even as a good Samaritan during this, this motion to dismiss hearing, who brought the rounds to the sheriff's office in Santa Fe and said, you ought to test these because I believe what I have here is the, the batch of rounds from which the round that killed Helena Hutchins came from. And he had them from storing ammunition for Hannah's dad, Thel Reed, who had lent ammunition to Seth Kenny, ammunition that Seth took possession of. I, I want to ask you something that came up. The prosecution was sort of pushing back during the hearing. You heard Kerry Morrissey saying, well, the defense knew about Troy Teske, and they could have called him as a witness. Uh, share with us why you didn't, please. Well, and I'll tell you exactly why we didn't. Uh, I did know about Troy Teske, and we had been asking them for years, the prosecution for years, to come and pick up these rounds and test them. Troy Teske had rounds from the same batch that went to Seth Kenny on the 1883 set through Thel Reed. So we had been asking him, test these rounds and see if they match the live rounds from the rest set. Uh, the sheriff wouldn't pick him up. Then in November of 2023, Kerry Morrissey, interviewed Seth Kenny and said, we are going to have law enforcement come get them. So please preserve them. So that what, that's what Troy did. He didn't do anything with them. He waited. We waited. Uh, again, the prosecution never came and picked him up, never tested him. So the problem is they just denied the opportunity for us to determine if those matched the live rounds. At that point, there was not a reason to call Troy Teske. So at the end of the trial, we had them turn those into the sheriff, hoping that they would then test them. So if our appeal is successful, we can say we got to the truth. The biggest question in the case is, how did those live rounds get there? And the first part is testing and matching that same batch, which they weren't able to do. They weren't, they weren't willing to do, I should say. So instead of testing it, they hid it in a secret file which that, that was inconceivable, and, and I never thought in a million years they would do that. No, uh, certainly not. I, I'm sure they are just full of regret uh, and embarrassment today, as they, they should be. Uh, they should be uh, more than embarrassed. Uh, Jason, is there anything else? I mean, there's so much here. Uh, please tell us anything else you want to share, uh, perhaps even your client Hannah's reaction to this. I'm sure you've spoken to her since the news of the dismissal uh, broke. Uh, anything you can share about uh, what she um, related in terms of how she feels now? You know, I can tell you that she is she's very hopeful that the judge will hear her new motion. And, the, and, and this judge is very thoughtful, very uh, considering of all the evidence. And, and look, all we're asking for is a fair shake here in a fair procedure and and we did not get it during that trial uh, unquestionably with the with what happened yeah this is uh it, it's quite a shame uh and and you know well from serving on the other side uh, there's no reason why you didn't get that expert firearms report you mentioned uh, the statements coming from 
the other interviews that were done with Seth Kenny that are exculpatory and favorable for your client uh, and why uh, you uh, were not privy to this information um, you know, regarding those those rounds and why they sat on them and refused to test. Uh, Jason Bowles, thank you so much for your time and for waking up early for us this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.